second piece is Houdini the hamster. Oh, I was going to read a little bit of the piece. But Houdini has performed Toast and Stack in the Edinburgh Film Festival. Toast was nominated. Uh, in Toast, she was nominated for Best Actress by the stage, is that right? Uh, and a uh, gratification of the Christmas Carol was commissioned by Group Horse for the Broccoli Jack. Um, the second piece is Houdini the hamster. It's by Gail Scanlon. I will talk to you just a little bit. But, um, uh, but I'm just going to set the, set the scene or, or talk a little bit about particularly the challenges of this piece. Um, unlike, uh, unlike Buried, uh, this piece looks at the visual aspect or the visual things that are possible with radio. So you'll see the way sounds can be created and, and, and could be made for, for a radio recording if they, were, if they were to be done in this way. So you'll see the actors interacting, uh, they'll have little microphones on and they'll be interacting with the making of the sounds as well as as well as moving about to do the acting, and also I believe that the Foley artists on the side here will be making the sounds live uh, as the piece goes on. So that will be who did the hamster, and we're about to start in just a moment. Yep, okay, who did the hamster. Case door properly. I checked it three times. Oh, no wonder it's called Houdini, eh? Now, don't take the mick. I promised Timmy I'd look after him. I can't tell him it's gone. He loves it. He's had it since his operation. Well, you sure you did like Dan set? By the book. What, put the brick on top of the cage door? Yeah. You sure? It was still there when I went to feed him. Well, then how did it get out? I knew we should have brought him here. We could have kept an eye on him then. A rodent at 900 paces. Do you remember the bowl? Yeah, Houdini wouldn't have lasted five minutes. If I can't find him, what am I going to tell to me? So much for his favourite uncle, Matt. I'll be the uncle that lost his hamster. Oh, calm down. They're not due home for another four days. Gives you plenty of time to sort it out, eh? But what if I can't find him? I just can't face Timmy if I've lost his hamster. He's told me loads of times how Houdini is always escaping. Oh, he's used to it happening. When you find him, you can tell Timmy all about it. He'll love it. You think so? I know so. Yeah. Careful, it's hot. Okay. Thanks. <sighs> well? What are we going to do about it? We? Yeah, us. I, I don't know about hamsters, do I? I mean, where do they go when they're loose? What do they like? Can they climb? Oh, can they climb? Oh, yes, they can climb. I expect by now he's shinned up the curtain, climbed out of the window and made his escape into the wild. Well, I don't know, do I? Look, Nina, you have to help me. Think a little Timmy. Coming home to an empty cage. Oh, all right. 
I suppose I'll have to help you. We can't have little Timmy coming home to an empty cage. Thanks, Lee. Yeah, don't Thanks. count your chickens. It's not your chickens I'm worried about. <laughs> He's not hiding in the bedding. Well, the food bowl's empty, so we might be searching for some more. Are they like mice? Do they hide in the skirt anymore? Oh, I don't think Dini's eating a hole in the woodwork. The kitchen door's open. Go look through the cupboards. Good thinking, Batman. He's probably just munching his way through the cereals. I'm on it. I can't see. Oh, and there's no sign of anything being eaten. When you discovered in college, you already refilled his food. Of course I had. I came here to feed the little salt. Oh, so he's had food. Well, it'll be somewhere warm then. Oh. Well, Dan said, the last hamster that escaped, it crawled down the back of the sofa. Oh, yeah. He had to pull out all the stuff in to get it. It got into hibernation. Oh, great. And now we've got a hibernating hamster on our hands. Might it could be anywhere. Well, at least two deities lived up to his name. <laughs> That's not funny. No. Timmy will be distraught. Okay, okay. Well, keep feeling around the sofa and do those chairs. I'll check the coats and stuff. He isn't a, um, he isn't a Harriet, is he? No, 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 no. Don't even go there. Oh, maybe he's gone out and gone into the shed. I'll check. Yeah. You keep looking in here. Trying to get in with the other one. 
Timmy parked up. Look, look, look. Ruth Edie's had a baby. Oh, bless him. Yeah. I think that kid needs a few lessons in reproduction. Yeah. Eddie Rose. Little Timmy's thrilled because he's got two hamsters now. Dan reckons that the scent of the new hamster brought Houdini out of hiding. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Uh, your face when you caught that cat. I thought you were going to kill it. Mm. Anyway, you're back in the good books now. Back to being my favourite Uncle Matt again. Oh, you know what? You're my favourite. That was We Need a Hamster by Gail Stanley. Great, that's our, our second piece of Dinner in a Hamster. Uh, Gail, we were doing that. There you are, yes. Uh, how was that? <coughs> Good, that was fun. We did get the rehearsals as well. And what, 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 how did the play change in it with the mentorship with, with David? It, it did change slightly when we were sort of over the room, so we put some of the things in the cast and also put their own bits in. Oh, did they? So did they just put bits in? Were they bigger than parts of that? Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, right. Yeah. Um, so, so the, the last few years, Gail's monologue has been performed by the Summer State writers at their new writers' evening, and she likes to write comic performance poetry. It's currently working on a full length play at once. Won a competition with a piece starting, I know a woman with eight legs. Yeah. Is that, can I ask, I mean, I, I, I often stop people from asking this question, a, a, a question after things, so you, you don't have to ask, but do, do you actually know? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Do you want me to remember it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she, uh, the lady lived next door to us and she had polio and she had what they call a Polyladies in the caliber. Right. Calibre made out of this poly thing. So it looks like a lady. Right. Uh, but they don't have the shelf life of the caliber, so about every 12 months she's got another one, so she kept them. She kept the old one. <laughs> <laughs> so she had one of the statues. That's interesting. <laughs> it kind of sets you up, I think, one way and then subverts it, but also there's like a, like a comic touchiness to that little image there. Um, how was that? Any, any, any thoughts from people, just initial impressions of, of what that was like with, with, with the most kind of running around, having the mics all in the contrast with, with the first piece? Not at all, you're, you're saving it all for, for later on, are you? Okay, great. Um, we don't have a changeover to do now, so it's interval time. Yes, so it's, uh, how long is it? Uh, 15 minutes. It's 15 minutes, so it's time to nip down, grab a drink at the bar, have a, a freshen yourself up, and then pop back to the second half of Albino mosquito.